Boys and girls, we all know how hard and how difficult it can be to make your high-gain guitar tracks sit right in a dense metal mix, right? They might sound great soloed, but once you put them in the mix, things start falling apart, especially if you have a very expressive performance, you know, if it's not only lower chuga chuga, but it goes from there up to a more, to a higher, more melodic playing. Really difficult to make that sound right in the mix. But there is a very powerful tool that can help you to fix that. And I'm talking about dynamic EQ. Well, I know the correct term would be multiband compression, but I use, I say dynamic EQ because then people understand what I'm talking about. Anyway, today I want to give you a great example. I just re amped a solo of Mr. Carl Sanders from the mighty death metal band Nile. I'm sure you know him. What a great guitarist. He played a guest solo for a Swiss band called Omophagia. Fantastic band. Link below. Please check them out. So I'm going to show you how I use Dynamic EQ to tame that very expressive performance of Mr. Carl Sanders. And not only am I going to show you how I did that, you can also download my FabFilter Pro MB preset later in this video. That will be a lot of fun. Let's get started. So Carl sent me his DI track and I re amped his DI track here in the studio. And he was super happy about the tone in the end. I used a Marshall amp and a Marshall cab, but with two Jensen speakers blended. And he told me exactly what he wanted and everybody was happy in the end. But that's not today's story. Today's story is the dynamic EQ. What you are about to see is a part, a snippet of a dynamic EQ course inside my academy, the Kohler Audio Cult. So if you like that course, check out the link below um, because there is a lot more. There's an entire academy where you can learn how to record, produce, mix and master heavy music from hard rock to the most brutal death metal. And I mean learning, you know, it's no bullshit, it's real learning. Okay, so let's watch a snippet from my Dynamic EQ course now coming from Cola Audio Cult. And later I'll tell you how to download that preset, that fat filter preset. Let's go. So here's another very typical example, a real world example of how I use dynamic EQing, AKA multiband compression on solo lead guitars. In this example, we're talking about a death metal band from Switzerland called Omophagia. Great band, very technical, very cold sounding. And on their latest album that I produced and recorded and mixed, we got one song where we have Mr. Carl Sanders from Nile playing a guest solo. And I ended up using a Marshall DSL 50 into a Marshall cab, an oversized Marshall cab, but with Jensen speakers. I think I combined the Jensen Nighthawk and the Electric Lightning, and that kind of gave the whole guitar tone a, a raw feel. But there were a lot of lower mid and bass resonances that need to be tamed a little bit. And that's why I'm using the dynamic EQ here. But Carl was very happy in the end. He said, hey, it sounds like standing right next to his Marshall rig. He was perfectly happy. Um, all right, so let's have a listen to the band first. They sound like this. Nice song. And here we got the solo. And so on. Nice solo. Um, you see, there's a lot going on. The problem very often on solo guitars is the wide tonal range. So 
the guitarist goes from very low to very high and that asks for a very different EQ setting and it triggers all the resonances there might be, especially coming from the cab. And that's where you start using dynamic EQs. But let's just have a look at what I did here. Let me solo the track and let me bypass all the plugins. And let's have a listen. And I want you to focus on the lower mid and the bass resonances. So here, whenever he goes down to those lowest notes, we have some kind of build up in the lower frequencies, and that's really pumping into the mix. So that is the first problem. But now let's have a listen to the unprocessed track in the mix. It doesn't sound bad at all, it's a good guitar tone, but I can hear that it's kind of disconnected from the mix, you know, like some of the notes are jumping at me, others are a little disappearing, so it doesn't really sit where it needs to sit, especially in the lower mids and the low end. Let's just switch between the processed version, this one. Which is just right here all the time, no matter what he plays and go back to the unprocessed version. Which is actually quite a bit louder, but it feels like the guitar is kind of jumping around. You know, it's not fixed, it's not nailed to a certain position within the mix. And uh, that's what we gotta change. So I started with a normal static EQ that you can see here, like my typical moves. We got a low cut and a high cut, uh, which will help us to focus more on the actual tonal content of the playing. I'm kind of surprised that I boosted the low end here. I normally don't do that, but it seemed to help. Then we have two resonances, you know, this area here, 350. As you know from watching my EQing guitars video, is a good frequency to clean up your guitars a little more and to remove lower mid resonances. Let's have a listen. Up here we had another resonance around 840, but this is very, very gentle, just 1 dB. And then we have the main EQ move, so I'm boosting around, what is it, 2K. And once again, from my EQing guitars video, you know that 2K, especially broadband 2K, is a great frequency to make the guitars jump at you, to make them sound in your face. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm boosting 2 dB. And this is making the guitars more present without making them harsh. If you go higher to 3 or 4K, you know, it's it's making the guitar more noisy and more harsh. But here, it just, it just you know, makes it sound closer. But this was the maximum I could do. Only I could only boost 2 dB. If I go further, it sounded, especially on the higher notes, it sounded kind of edgy and harsh. And this is where you start using a dynamic EQ. So that is the next plugin here. So we got Pro MB, and you see, this is kind of like the same frequency area, but this time it's dynamically boosting the uh, that range, depending on how much 2K we already have. This was another way for me to get the guitars more in your face without making them sound harsh. Because the dynamic EQ is source dependent, so it's listening to the source material and it's only boosting that frequency whenever it's necessary, if you dial it in correctly. Then we have the other band here, which is, I guess, the most important band here. So we got a healthy cut here, dynamic EQ again, around, what is it, uh, 144 hertz. I did this in order to get the low end under control. Now let's have a look. And this is a beautiful example of a dynamic EQ band. You see, it is removing almost, what is it, 9 dB on those lower notes, like taming the resonances and leaving the higher notes untouched. 
That means whenever Carl is playing higher nodes, we're not removing any low end. We're not making any of the higher nodes sound thinner. But whenever he goes down into that resonant area, you know, it's getting removed. And this, yeah, this goes all the way from a freaking 90 B to nothing. Let's have another listen. And especially in the beginning, this removes all this boomy whoop. That sounds a little unnatural to me. So the dynamic EQ helps me to balance out the solo a little more. There's two more things that I added. First, we got a pull tech EQ boosting the highs a little bit around 12K. I just love the bell filter of a pull tech. So I'm boosting that and then I'm using Soothe 2 to remove some of the resonances that we have in this two, two and a half K area where we boosted so much to get the guitar in our phase. So we need those frequencies and Soothe is very nice for removing some of the smaller resonances hit there so things don't get harsh. So let's just turn off those two plugins. And turn them on. again, sounds a little smoother and a little more controlled. So you see, I'm not using any conventional compressors here, but still after all this processing, uh, it still sounds natural. We haven't really changed the character of the guitar tone, but things just sit where they need to sit. Things sound controlled and nice. Now the final step is to add some automation and you can see it's not a lot. It's maybe one and a half dB or two dB max here. Uh, so depending on what he plays, I'm just, you know, riding the fader a little bit. Then we have those little parts here where there's a harmony coming in. So I bring down the volume of the main track a little bit because I don't want the, the level of the solo to change because of the harmony. I want, you know, I want it to sound balanced all the time. Let's have a listen. Here I'm trying to fade out the solo smoothly. All right, so what we have achieved, I think, is a pretty natural and still raw sounding guitar tone that sounds like Carl Sanders, but uh, we tamed it a little bit to sit right in a very, very dense metal mix. I want you to check out Omophagia. That's a great band. If you're into extreme metal, you should check them out. Um, very nice guys as well. I don't have to tell you to check out Carl Sanders, right? I mean, Nile is one of the greatest death metal bands of all time. If you haven't checked out Nile, you should do that immediately. All right, this was my little video about dynamic EQing. All right, everybody, I hope you liked that little lesson and you could learn something here. Once again, if you want to learn more, if you like my no bullshit approach, check out the link below to Cola Audio Cult. Um, my academy where you can find tons and tons of different courses from me and from other world-class engineers about recording, producing, mixing and mastering all kinds of heavy music. And uh, all, even this course, the Dynamic EQ course, this was one example. The, the, the whole course is much longer and will show you quite a few different things and a lot more what you can do with Dynamic EQs. Last thing, and maybe you've been waiting for this, but if you want to download my FabFilter Pro MB preset, the one that I used in this example, all you got to do is follow another link below to my email list. You subscribe to that email list, follow the instructions, and you can download that preset and fiddle around with it and see if it helps you, especially um, when you try to make your solo guitars sit right in a dense mix. All right, that's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I love you all. I see you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.